Hi, welcome to this chapter on work and energy. To begin with, if a force is being applied in a particular direction to move this lawn mower and the distance is in another direction and the angle between the force and the distance is theta, then work is calculated as force multiplied by distance multiplied by cosine theta. So that's the formula for work. And uh, the unit of work is a joule, which is actually Newton multiplied by meter. And here is an example. If the force is 20 Newtons, distance moved is 10 meters and Assume that both force and distance are moving in the same direction, which means the angle between them is zero degrees. I'm going to draw that. All right, so if the angle is zero degrees, then the formula for work is Fd cosine theta. So it's 20 times 10 times cosine of zero. And cosine of zero is one, so we get the answer as 200 joules. On the other hand, if the force and distance are in opposite directions, as shown in this diagram, for example, if this is the gravitational force and you are lifting something up against it, now the angle between the force and displacement is uh, 180 degrees. And so using the same numbers as before, the work would be 20 times 10 times cosine 180, which becomes negative 1. Cosine 180 is negative 1. So we get negative 200 joules. Now remember that negative work always shows that we are working against something. As an example, when you lift an object up, you're working against gravity. Or if you move something on the floor, you are working against friction. And in both of these cases, the work would be negative. In fact, work done on a system would be negative, and work done by a system would be positive. Now, what do you mean by work done on a system? That means you're working against something. And so basically the formula for work is Fd cosine theta. Now, work done can also be found out from the graph drawn between F cosine theta and D. All we have to do is just find the area of the graph. So in this diagram, it is a rectangular graph. I mean, the area is rectangular. So length times width will give you uh, the work. So work can also be found from the area of the graph drawn between F cosine theta versus D. Here's the same graph that you had seen before. D in meters, F cosine theta in newtons, and find the area to get the work done. Now, talking about energy, energy is the ability to do work. And basically, uh, there are two types of energies that you need to know about. One is called potential energy, and the other is kinetic energy. And potential energy in this case is we're talking about gravitational potential energy when you lift an object up let's say that the mass of the object is m and you're lifting it through a height h the work that we are doing is mgh so the work that we do on the system becomes its potential energy so the formula for potential energy is mass times acceleration due to gravity times height or mgh that's the formula for gravitational potential energy
potential energy or gravitational potential energy is because of an object being stored at a height from the ground. So water in a water uh, in an overhead tank or any object at a height like a ceiling fan, all of these have potential energy because they are at a height from the ground. The symbol for potential energy is U, and so that's why U is equal to mgh. Another very interesting fact about potential energy is that the work done does not depend on the path taken. So you can uh, go from one point to the other, from A to B, you can take the load straight up, or you can take it uh, using the stairs. In both of these cases, although the path is different, the height is the same. See, the vertical height is the same, and so the work done will be the same. And this is the case uh, with gravitational field. But and so gravitational forces are called conservative forces. But there are also non conservative forces like friction, in which case the work done will depend on the path taken. So there are two types of forces one is a conservative force, where the work done does not depend on the path taken, the other is a non conservative force, where the work done will depend on the path taken. For example, friction is a non-conservative force, which means the work done depends on the path taken. And uh, it only depends on the initial and the final positions, is what I'm writing there. You can take any path, it only depends on the initial and final positions. Here you can see that the work is the same for both path one and a two, because it's a conservative force. Another kind of energy possessed by anything that moves is called kinetic energy. And this kangaroo has kinetic energy, water flowing in a river has kinetic energy, a, a moving car. Anything that moves has kinetic energy, and kinetic energy is given by the formula one half times mass times velocity square. Okay, so that's the formula for kinetic energy. One of the most important principles in physics is called the conservation of energy. And according to this principle of conservation of energy, the total energy will be a constant. So I'm trying to show that in the case of a roller coaster, you know, at this point, uh, when it's not moving, it has potential energy, but as it drops down, all of its potential energy is changed into kinetic energy. So if we measure the height from here, uh, at that point the height is zero, and at this point it is 25 meter. So we see that at this point it has kinetic energy, but at the height it has potential energy. So the total energy at both these points must be equal. That is what I've shown here. The potential energy at A plus the kinetic energy at A where A is the starting point, should be equal to the potential energy at B plus the kinetic energy at B. Now here are the two formulas, and uh, we have M times uh, G times height is 25 plus kinetic energy at A is zero, because it's not moving, and then uh, at the bottom, the potential energy is zero because the height is zero. And then we have kinetic energy, which is one half times mass times velocity square, right? 
So the mass is not given, but that's okay because the mass will get canceled from both sides. And we can rearrange this to calculate the velocity at the bottom, which is 22.14 meter per second. And so that's why if the roller coaster comes down from a greater height, when it comes to the bottom, it has a much higher velocity. So that's the principle of conservation of energy. But uh, in the case of uh, a spring, it can either be extended or compressed. And when you extend a spring or compress a spring, uh, you are doing work. And this work that is done becomes its potential energy. So this is called elastic potential energy. And the formula for elastic potential energy is one half kx squared, where k is a constant, uh, which is called a spring constant. It depends on the nature of the spring. If it's a tight spring, then k is going to be high. Like those springs underneath the cars, they are of high k. But if you look at the spring in a ballpoint pen, uh, then the k is going to be small. So in either case, the potential energy of a spring is one half k x squared. And we can see how we get that formula by drawing a graph between force and extension. You will see that as the extension increases, the force also increases. So we get a triangle and the area of a triangle is one half times base times height. The base is x and the height is force, but force in a spring is given by kx. So you also have to know that formula. Force is kx and potential energy is one half kx squared. I hope that makes sense. Another uh, application of conservation of energy. This toy car is released by pushing it against the spring. So the potential energy in the spring, which is one half kx squared, becomes the kinetic energy of the car, which is one half mass times velocity squared. So the car moves with a certain velocity and then when it loops this loop and it goes to a height h, all that kinetic energy now becomes gravitational potential energy. So uh, we can say that one half mv squared is equal to mgh. So that just shows how energy can change from elastic potential energy at the beginning to kinetic energy of the car, and then finally to gravitational potential energy. Well, solar energy is a big uh, thing nowadays where, you know, especially in states like Texas, we could use the solar energy to, to convert it into electrical energy using solar cells. Uh, and uh, see, as in this case of the solar power aircraft, you can use it or we can even have electricity produced that way to be used at home. So that again is another example of uh, conservation of energy or conversion of energy in this case. So finally in this chapter we have the concept of power and uh, power depends on how fast you can do work. Let me write the formula for power. Power is work over time. So this woman is running upstairs and uh, if she runs fast, she's going to use more power. And if she goes slowly, she does the same kind of work when she goes from that point to the final point. But if she takes more time, then her power is going to be less. So power is work over time. The unit of work is joule and time is second. And so the unit of power is joule per second, which is also called what? The symbol is W. So here are the formulas that we did in this chapter. Number one, work is Fd cosine theta. Gravitational potential energy is mgh. Elastic potential energy is one half kx squared. Kinetic energy is one half times mv squared. And this is the work energy theorem. 
although I did not specify it, I'm just telling you now that work done is equal to the change in kinetic energy. Work done is equal to change in kinetic energy. That's called the work energy theorem. And finally, power is work over time. I hope you have understood all these concepts and now try to follow along and see how I worked out the problems in this chapter. Thank you and good luck.